Hi friends, my name is Chris Pandey and I'm from Teachy Krish. Today we'll be talking about reverse engineering. So for those of you who don't know what reverse engineering is, it is simply the dissection of executables and figuring out what the code does. When you're writing code in Python or C, you can simply read the code and understand what's in it. But once it is converted into an executable, it becomes unreadable. But why would anyone want to do reverse engineering? What are the legal and illegal aspects of this? So the legal aspects might be making software compatible with other versions or uh, let us say malware analysis. But there are a lot of fun illegal aspects. There must be some time where you had to use software that requires a license key activation but did not want to buy it. So you might have gone to Google to search for cracked versions of that software. But the problem with those is that they always have some sort of a virus or malware embedded. But if you know reverse engineering and if you're good at it, you don't you'll never have to worry about that so that you know, because you can crack the software by yourself or it might also be uh, to extract sensitive information uh, like passwords or keys from an executable today we'll be reversing .elf binaries uh, just like how windows has .exe executables linux has .elf binaries uh, and we'll be doing this challenge from a website called as try hack me for those of you who don't know what try hacking is it is a website that helps you practice hacking so we have eight challenges today we have eight binaries to crack so let's get started For this entire video, I'll be using a tool called as Radar2. Radar2 is a reverse engineering tool and we may, for the first four challenges, for the first three or four challenges, uh, they are very simple. So you can do it in the more, uh, so you can run it by using strings, but I won't be showing that. So you get adjusted to using Radar2 by the time you get to the top challenges. So you run R2, debug, and then we'll start with crack me one over here we we'll start with the easiest challenge of all okay so first we start by pressing aaa so this this tells it to analyze everything okay so now that it has analyzed everything let's look at all the functions running here now the one function to look into in every binary is main so i'm just going to so now i'll run pdf at the rate main and now this will give me every single thing that is in the main function so let's start examining this so these are all the variables that the program requires this variable is an argument so this is the one that will give to the program along as we execute it so I'll just show the binary to you so let's run crack me one and now so this challenge was actually quite simple all you have to do was just run the binary so after running the executable we get the first flag over here honestly speaking this was no challenge this was no fun let's move on to the next binary so now we start with crack me two now again we start by analyzing all once this is done we'll list all the functions and again let's start by analyzing what's in the main function so for that again type pdf at the rate main so this is everything that's going on in the main function so let's just see what happens once we run the binary crack me two so now the usage for this particular program is to you run crack me and then give a password to it so if we put in the right password it will give us access granted so let's just try putting some random value test okay access is denied now let us see what is happening over here so if you look into this closely um, we see that the password is already over here so this is bad programming now but let's try to understand this a little more so when we go uh, on looking at this part of the program it just checks if the value that you have given uh, is nil or not if it is not nil it goes directly to this part of the program as you can see it makes a jump 
to this particular register and all of this is written in assembly like this part of uh, the third section is written in assembly these are all the register names so it checks if there is something in the value and then it goes to this particular part after that it runs a function called as string compare now string compare uh, this is a c plus c function so I, I didn't exactly know how string compare works i'm not really proficient with c plus plus but if you ever face any problem like that you can always go and ask it the one person that knows everything google so it's always good to look at the documentation so here we have the detailed documentation on how the string compare function works so basically this is very simple it it compares the two strings if both of them are equal then it gives out the output as one and one second so uh, this is different here this uh, they are not equal hence it's a non zero integer you get you get the point over here so now we already know what string it is comparing this with so it's comparing this with super secret password so let's just try this dot dash crack me to control shift v and we have access granted and the binary has also given us the flag so now you can just paste it now let's move on to the next binary from this binary you're going to have to start paying attention to the detail so on running analysis for the crack me 3 binary start by aaa analyze all functions we see that there's only one important function here main we also have the string compare function but that's not important right now okay so now this is a slightly longer program similar to the previous one i'm just going to skip this one so it just checks the uh, checks if you have given it an output over here and similar to the previous one the string is given but instead of it being in plain text this is encoded so i'll just try to paste the string in here crack me three control shift v okay so now it teases me okay it, it slightly roast me because the password is not right but this is the secret this string is encoded now in which particular algorithm uh, we can say that this is base 64 it looks like that but uh, now we should not always go by the looks the one trick to identifying a base 64 string is by looking at the character length if the character length is divisible by 4 then it is a base 64 string so there might be multiple times when you're playing ctf that it might not be encoded only in base 64 but in multiple other encoding patterns such as base 32 or base 58 so how do you figure that out so instead of trying to do all the guesswork and trying different combinations the best thing is to use a tool called cyber chef so once you go to cyber chef just paste the output over here and then import in a module called magic and this will automatically decode the string for you and try uh, every possible combination so right now this was completely simple this was encoded only in base 64 but this is always a useful trick so keep that in mind when you cannot encode a string that looks like base 64 maybe it's encoded in other formats so now let's go to the fourth binary now the fourth binary is where it started to get challenging for me i started reverse engineering just a few days back i found this topic really interesting that's why i decided to make a video on it so again here we go to the main function okay pdf at the rate main now this one is so much more shorter than the other binaries but if you look into this so all uh, the call functions here the call imp print printf is a function and here compare password is another function so this is all basic it checks for a value if it has a value then it goes to this place if it does not then it gives you an error message to put your password in so again let me just run the binary because it's always a good practice so again i did not give any value this is why it came to this this is why it came to this particular register and exited here clearing all the values so now uh, we see that the comparison is taking taking place through the compare password program so the compare password function so now similarly how just like how we went into pdf main we can go into compare password 
Now that we are in compare password, we see that this is running, this compare password function is running string compare inside this. And if you look at the line just above string compare, we see the two values, uh, two registers RDI and RAX. And so we know that string compare is using these two values as its comparison. Now this in assembly, this is always the function. This is going to be the source value and this is going to be the destination value. The comparison takes place from the destination value to the source value. So to print the value of this particular register, all I need to do is px at the rate control shift v. But as you can see, here it gives me a completely useless value. This is of no use. That is because I am printing this value when the program has already executed and all the values have been cleared. How do I prevent that from happening? All I'm going to do is I'm going to set a breakpoint. I'm going to copy the register just above, uh, sorry, uh, string compare. I'm going to copy this register's value and I'm going to enter db. So what this will do is this will set a breakpoint on this particular register as in the program will execute until this particular register and then stop and will not continue unless we tell it to do so. So now the breakpoint is set. And so uh, the thing is, uh, we also have to give it some sort of a value. As in, at me four we need to give it a value password but we cannot do that like that this is exactly why we'll have to set uh, run a new function called OOD and here we can give our value so this will be used as the argument so now the argument is set and now we can run DC to continue running now it says to us that it hit the breakpoint over here the same place now I can just go back to that function compare password and as you can see the program is telling me that it stopped right here. Right now the values of the registers RDI and RAX haven't been cleared. So that's why I can use this to print the value of the RAX. And here we see more secure password is the string it requires. Let's copy this. Now that me 4 and WD. And now we get a password OK message. So we have successfully hacked this binary too. Moving on to crack me five. Let's run debug. Crack me five. Analyze all. AFL. Now let's look at the functions carefully over here. Here we do not see any new functions. There's just one main function that seems interesting. So PDF. Okay. So now this one is so much more longer than the previous one. If you look carefully, all the bytes, we, uh, the thing is, we already have the password for this one, uh, for uh, this binary over here, but it is uh, jumbled up. So we have a zero F D and now assembling all of this without any typos is a difficult thing and also not the right way to do it. And compared to the previous one, this one does not require an argument, but this one does require an input. So this is easier compared to having to give out an argument because here you don't have to set the OOD value. So how do we get the value for this the right way without making any typos, which we would possibly if we would try to manually assemble this. So similarly, we see the string compare function is running here. So we can copy this. I mean, we can copy the one before this. Okay, and then we can set a breakpoint here. So I quit uh, breakpoint. Now the breakpoint is set. And now let's run the function till here. So again. So now let me give my input as test. And now it hit the breakpoint. Now let me print the function here. And now it ended right about this place. So if I print the RX value, the destination value, ex at the rate RX. Now here there's a twist. The, the input that I'm giving is now being stored into the destination value. So the one that it needs to compare with must be stored in the R source uh, parameter or the RDI register. So now if we print RDI, we get the password no, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is already in the RAX register. So if we look into this string, this is similar to all the bytes that we found earlier. So dot uh, crack me five and control shift V. 
now let's copy the rest of the string perfectly now we get the output as good game and i forgot to tell you that the whole goal of crack me 4 was to no, no, sorry crack me 5 was to put a string such that the output will be good game and if we put something else here it gives us the output always dig deeper so we have also solved this binary So now I'm back after a break and now we'll be doing the sixth binary. We have completed five out of eight binaries and I have to tell you that the next three are going to be very challenging if you are a beginner. I know that these were challenging for me and crack me six was my favorite binary and also the most interesting. Uh, I had to refer a write up for this but it was all worth it because I learned something amazing and now I'm going to share that with you. So let's do the drill. A AF, sorry, AFL and now we see the main function we also see another important uh, and interesting function my secure test but we are going to look into it later so df add rate main and I, I, I'm sorry I think we should always run the binary ones at me 6 okay again this is an argument based thing so remember to set the OOD value so again it checks for value if you actually have a value then it goes into the compare password function so now let's see what is inside the compare password function pdf it. okay so then uh, we can mostly ignore all of this binary code okay and uh, the thing is so um, we see that it gives out the string password okay and password not okay and all of these judgments are made by this particular function now let's analyze what this is and you're going to go in shock once you see this I know I was so if you look into this carefully all the arrows were here they're not this they're not your regular old arrows but these are multiple if else commands so many conditionals even if you start uh, start from here first you're testing this one byte then you're going to this one and if it's not equal to so now there are so many jumps and the code is so long normally if you are doing reverse engineering or even coding i suggest you to uh, set your monitor in portrait mode so that you can see all the lines of code once and there will be no wasted space like this but this code is so long and confusing that uh, even portrait mode can't save you now to try to understand all of this code like this you're going to have to put your brain through some serious pressure now how do we fix this now there is a very simple fix to this thanks to the write-up i read i'll link the write-up down below so now let's print s and then the function name so i'm just telling this to define the function and now i'm going to type capital v two times v v what this is going to do is show me the entire thing in a flow chart so again the compare so my secure test starts from here and uh, so basically uh, let's see if it if the value is equal to something now uh, here we see that this is not comparing it all at once like the previous binaries instead this is comparing your input to the password that it needs to test bit by bit so as you can see that this is the uh, this is the first character over here 0x31 so unlike the previous ones this is not encoded in base64 this is not encoded in any format but and it's not even my English uh, this is hex hex uh, you, you can also use cyber chef for this one so uh, from hex so you can ignore the 0x and the prefix of 0x in front of every x character that you see so let me just type 31 and it gives me so 31 is equivalent to 1 now let us try to figure out all the bytes that we can get so if this has a byte 31 and then it goes into another conditional which has another byte so if there is a byte there is a byte called one uh, the byte one is at the starting then it goes to the next conditional which checks for the byte 33 now it's best if you keep on noting this simultaneously so 3 corresponds to 33 corresponds to 3 then let's go to the next one 
and uh, we see that uh, yeah we see that this uses 33 two times so let's go uh, let's type in 33 again so till now the password is 133 after this we get the pa uh, after this the next byte it corresponds to is 37 three seven so output is one three three seven and the next byte we get is five f after this we get the next byte as seven zero then the next byte is seven seven and then the next byte is x64 and after this it exits the program and clears all the registers so I mean exits the function so this is the password that we have decoded 1337 pwd PW st uh, pwd stands for password but again there's a fun fact what does 1337 stand for uh, stand for so 1337 is nothing but lead as in 1 is similar to L, 3 is similar to E, and then 7 is similar to T. So this stands for lead. Now what exactly is lead? Lead is a language. You can consider lead to be a language. So basically uh, it is nothing but, uh, uh, it's like you using, uh, you are so lead is not, so lead is quite simple to understand here uh, in your passwords. There are instances where you replace A with the at the rate symbol. You replace I or L with the exclamation mark. Similarly, uh, so basically lead is all about replacing characters with similar looking numbers or even special characters. So this is our password. Now let's test it out. Okay, dot six one three three seven P W D. So now we get the password OK message. So this is how you can use flowcharts. If you're ever intimidated by the output of the particular function, always use this feature of Radar2, which is my personal favorite, to understand the code easy. And so uh, we don't see anything interesting here. But if you want, you can try examining that. And for one more challenge, you can actually try to ponder. I, I won't be answering this in this video. Uh, so, but you can always try to wonder if you're new to programming, this will be a very good exercise for you on why does it go from the false positive then to the true one uh, to get to match the bytes. So, as you can see here, uh, it's first checking for the uh, byte 31 and then if it is true, it executes this particular function. You can always try to read the assembly code. This will be a good exercise and then why does it go back to the false string here? You can always try wondering about that. If you get an answer, please put that in the comment section. I'd love to read it. So now let's continue on to the next binary. Now let's go to crack me. Sorry. Radar two debug. Crack me seven. Let's get ready. Hey, hey. AFL. And we do not see any other interesting functions, but by default we go to main df at the rate main. So this one, similar to the previous one, has a lot of FL conditionals. So let's just try executing the code and see what this does. Crack me, no, sorry, crack me seven. So this is a simple menu. So let's just press one, one, test, okay. So two, let's say the number was three plus two, we get five. Okay, everything is fine. And then we, for pressing three, we get a quit. Okay, so this is simple code here. And now let us see if you can remember what we did last time. S and the function that we are in is main, that is to define the function. Now we are in main, the main function. Now capital V two times. Now we are in the flow chart mode, also the graph mode. So let's just see what this does. This is basically the initialization. Okay, so first it checks for a value. If the value is one, okay, if the value is not equal to one, then it must be equal to two. But if the value is equal to one, this goes into this particular block, which asks you for your name. So if it is not equal to one, then it must be equal to two. But if it is still not equal to 
but if it is uh, but if it is uh, not uh, but if it is not equal to 2 then it must be equal to 3 but let us say that it is equal to 2 it goes into this block which does the simple addition over here so and here we have one extra if else condition if the number that you have given the first time is actually a number and not a string or a character then it goes into asking you for the second number and then adding that if you give it an output or a character instead of a number then you get the value unable to read the number let's see what happens when you go to third so if you go to the third value over here we get uh, so it asks it uh, runs the core goodbye but let us say the value is still not third so make sure so what what value can you put other than one two or three remember not to put a string because if you put in a string or a character that is not a number it will immediately exit the code saying unknown input so we know now that we need to put a number here so let us see what exactly is it expecting from us so mm -hmm. so if we get if we do not put so now we know that it is comparing with it uh, with this value 7 a 6 9 if it is not equal to this particular value then it quits the program saying unknown choice but if we get this value right prints the output wow so what happens after that then it runs a function called as give flag now i already tried looking into the give flag function if you wanted to go and look into the give flag function that's very nice trust your instincts but you won't get anything in there so let's just find out what this value is about so again for this i'll be using a rapid tables hexadecimal to decimal conversion so because it requires a number here so the hex character is your x sorry 7a69 7a69 after converting this we get the number 31337 now similar to the previous one which read elite this reads elite so we are just try doing that here so crack me 7 okay and now let's paste in this number again this number this is a number and not a string that is why it's not going to quit the program saying that it's an unknown choice or the input was not recognized and now it gives us the flag here now it's going to the last binary now that you have the hang of all of these the last one won't be very difficult for you if you want you can pause the video try this one or if you get stuck here you can come back now let's continue AFL and then we don't see any interesting functions and let's go to main PDF at the rate main now this is so much more simpler than the previous functions if you look into the output again you must realize that this is mostly the initialization part if the input is actually not if the input is not nil then it gets us to this part where it runs a function called as imp atoi now if you look into this this actually looks like a programming uh, it looks like a c syntax that means this must be a c function and not a custom made one now i don't know what atoi is so the best thing to do is atoi man page in google man page is man is short for manual the ATOA function, if you read this, you're just going to see that the ATOA function converts a string into an integer. So now if you now here you can if you want you can always use the flowchart mode, but this one is rather simple. So I'll be using uh, I'll be running it in this mode. So we can see that it is comparing. So first, whatever output you give is being converted into an integer. What happens next? Whatever output you give will be converted to uh, will be compared with this hex value but here is a twist now since you have given an integer this must also be converted into a decimal value so let's figure out what the decimal value for this will be okay let's convert this and now we see that the decimal number is this So let's try executing the binary. Uh, crack me. Eight. And I suppose we are supposed to give uh, we are supposed to give the argument. Okay, now that the value is correct, 
we get the flag now if you want if you did not get this i'm just going to explain this to you one more time because i was pretty confused here because i never understood the whole i never realized that atoi is not a default function but it was intentionally placed here so once again whatever output you gave in is converted into an integer and is compared by this hex value later it is compared it is not compared so the integer that you give in is not compared by the, the hex value or the text value of this but this is also converted into an integer so the integer form of cafe food is this so once they equal it will run the function called as give flag and the flag is printed over here so now we have completed all the eight challenges i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you learned something from this again this is one of the most uh, e it is one of the easiest challenges out there okay reverse engineering as as i heard it is a lot more harder than this and i'll also try to make videos uh, with harder challenges in the future so if you have any doubts please enter this in the comment section for before uh, stopping the recording well, I'd just like to summarize the entire thing. I find I'd just like to summarize the UI by final. All the values in green over here, these are registered numbers. All uh, all values such as JE. JE here, J stands for jump, E stands for equal. So if this equals the particular value above, then it will jump to this particular register. Now, if you're using radar 2, you'll have all of these marked by arrows. So JMP, uh, when compared to JE, or uh, JNE where JNE is equal to jump uh, and J stands for jump and NE stands for not equal to JMP is an unconditional jump so no matter what uh, so it does not require any condition it will always jump to the particular register that it was given to and always if you want to read the value of a particular register make sure you set a breakpoint before a, a function is run over it otherwise you will get completely useless values and the last part of the code because of the last part of the code all the values will be cleared and you will have nothing because i was stuck on that for a long time i kept on thinking that uh, why, why was i getting nil values even though i was printing the uh, right register printing the value from the right register uh, it is because i did not set a breakpoint. so i hope you enjoyed this video and 